Uh, today's throwback. Chief Salami Agbaje, first construction supplies made magnet. Richest Nigerians of the 1800s and the early 1900s and the timeless lessons we must learn from them for lasting riches. Chief Salami Agbaje was unarguably Nigeria's first construction supplies made money bag of the late 1800s and the early 1900s during the colonial era. He was reportedly Ibadan's richest personality of his time. Indeed, there was a local dictum that acknowledged the unmatchable majesty of his palatial home. I must build my house like Agbaje's resplendent house. Is the devil in dying homeless. Agbaje was born in Lagos in 1880 to an Islamic teacher originally from Issei and his wife, Sinatu, who was a native of Ibadan. Growing up in an Islamic family, rote knowledge of the Quran was mandatory. He later apprenticed under a tailor and learned the art of tailoring. However, it did not last, it did not last in, in Lagos toward the end of the 19th century, he left for, he left for Ibadan to find better opportunities of life. Though Ibadan was a new environment for Agbaje, but his mother was from the city and she had lived there before marrying his father. He, in Ibadan, left the artisanal work of tailoring and focused on logging. His first major commercial success occurred when he was a timber contractor for the construction of the Lagos Ibadan railway line, which started in, which started in 1896. The railway soon emerged as an important mode of transporting raw materials from the interland to Lagos for onward export to Europe. Agbaje cashed in on the colonial economy by not only supplying most of the timber needed for the Novel railway line's construction, but he also used the railway post completion to cargo the many products he imported as a major merchant into Nigeria from Lagos to Ibadan. The timber business was his launching pad to greener investment pastures. He diversified the profit from timber contracting and set out to meet with farmers to seek avenues for produce buying in the Yoruba interland. He became a merchant who succeeded in linking and buying goods from the local farmers and selling them to expatriate firms for export. He was also notable for using advertising as a marketing strategy. His name and business could be seen splashed inside the pages of Yoruba News in the 1920s. From the produce buying venture, he spread his tentacles to transportation, import and export. He imported cotton, gin and rum, building materials, ads, umbrellas, and sewing machines. He was not only a success as an importer, but actually one of the few indigenous importers of his time. He had also risen to the top in Ibadan's social and traditional political circles and pioneered new ventures in the city. Other pioneering business enterprises or activities he was involved with in Ibadan included the first private motor garage in the city and the first truly indigenously owned business conglomerate, hiring both foreigners and indigenous. He also was the first to establish cinemas. He was the Balogun of Ibadan before his death in 1953. However, many prominent chiefs of Ibadan despised him for, according to them, being miserly. A culture of exhibitionistic largesse dispensation amongst prominent Ibadan chiefs had become part of the Ibadan society. Wealthy and high-ranking chiefs were used to dashing out money to Ibadan citizens and holding relatively open fees for merry for merrymaking and enjoyment. Indeed, one of his contemporaries, Chief Adebisi Giwa Alas Adebisi Dikon, was said to be so generous that he once paid the oppressive poll tax of all male Ibadan residents to the colonial district officer's office in a particular year to save them from being arrested and incarcerated for non-payment. 
In 1949, the mortgagees or clan heads in Ibadan brought charges against Agbaje to forestall him from ever becoming the Olubadan, the king of Ibadan, a meritocratic position which had little to do with blood lineage but rather relied on a person's ascension of the hierarchical order within the company of either warrior or civil chiefs of Ibadan. The underlying reason for the grievous allegation was his contempt for the wasteful culture of largesse dispensation and his unpopularity with the Ibadan masses. He was, however, cleared of all charges. At the time of his death in 1953, he had a very large family made up of many wives and children. He was known to have spent a great deal in giving his children the best education money could buy, and many of his children rose to occupy positions of high esteem in the major professions, including one who became the first medical doctor from Ibadan and a justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, the didactic. Chief Agbaje's life defined industry and value innovation. His shrewdness with money may have earned him the dislike of Ibadan masses, but it shows his conviction and courage of character. He was not out to compete in the frivolity of showing off with other Ibadan personages. His legacy as exemplified in his children and children's children because of the quality of education he invested in them is excellent. And that's it on the show tonight. I am Bola Oba.